I would say Dragon's Dogma absolutely deserves to be recognised as the greatest RPG ever, and the only reason it can't be is because Final Fantasy IX exists. So to give a bit of context for this video, I had almost no expectations going into this game when it first came out. I wasn't even sure if I'd like it or not at the time, so I downloaded the demo to give it a whirl and found myself fighting a griffin, which I thought was pretty cool. But it was at the point where my companion proceeded to launch me into the sky with his greatsword, thus allowing me to grab onto the griffin's beak and slap it in the face while it soared through the air that I realised, you know, maybe we're onto something here. I've seen some people describe Dragon's Dogma as being sort of like a cross between Devil May Cry and Final Fantasy, and yeah, that's actually fairly accurate. It doesn't have the insanely polished technical depth and capacity for stylish mayhem that Devil May Cry does, but it gives you way more control over how you want to fight and so much variety in that regard compared to just about any other RPG. The class diversity and combat in this game is just mwah. Maybe you want to be a sorcerer who does some insane stuff like summoning lightning whips and harpooning dragons in the heart with ice. Maybe you want to be the flashy rogue who can flip everywhere and speed around like a blur. Or maybe you just want to be the guy who looks at the dragon that's like 40 times your size and proceeds to punch it to death. They literally have items that help you do this. I used them for an entire playthrough. I've probably completed this game at least 30 times and that's genuinely not an exaggeration. You can fight so many things in this game, man. Goblins, harpies, cyclo cyclopes, cyclopses, I don't- Ogres, wolves, hunted packs, griffins, zombies that talk to you and it's really creepy. Saurians, chimeras, golems, and of course, dragons, baby. Dragons in this game actually move like you'd expect dragons to. I can't understate how cool that level of detail is. And the fights with them are easily a highlight of the game. They breathe fire, they swing around with tails and claws, they cast powerful magic, they swoop. Swooping is bad. And if you aren't careful, they can destroy you, especially at lower levels. Which is exactly how fighting dragons should be. And let's face it, I think we all came here for the same thing. Some of the enemies do get reskins, but said reskins actually change up their capabilities and the way they fight. And given that there are already so many unique enemies in the game, it's hard to complain about this one. Helping you fight all these bad guys is a loyal ally referred to as your... <sighs> your pawn. Yes, I know what that sounds like. I'm sorry about my accent. See, your character is the Arisen, which is basically like them being the Chosen One, but instead of just randomly being selected by the whims of fate, you become the Arisen by proving your worth through an act of extreme volition, which I honestly think is really cool detail. It makes you feel like your character actually earned their place as the special hero. They took that first step for themselves. As the Arisen, you find yourself tied to a pawn, a member of a mysterious legion bound to the Arisen and the cycle you become a part of. Since you can command the pawn legion, not just yours specifically, you can recruit two other pawns, and if you're playing online, you can choose from pawns other people have created. Speaking of, something that really helps with getting players immersed is the seriously robust character creation. You can make your character as beautiful, ugly, or middling as you like, and the wide variety of heights and builds you can select even have an effect on gameplay. Another reason this is important is because while your character doesn't speak, they do actually express themselves in cutscenes which is way better than just staring blankly the whole time. Also, it's very important to note that the story of this game is genuinely really good. For an entirely new IP, there's a lot of lore to sink your teeth into, and your first time playing feels sort of like unraveling a mystery. Seeing how it all plays out is genuinely fascinating, and well into the Dark Arisen content, there's interesting bits and pieces that flesh out the setting and story elements even further. Something I really want to draw attention to is the fact that Dragon's Dogma is a game that respects the time you invest into it. What I mean by that is that if you put in the time to gain levels and optimize every aspect of your skills and equipment, you can easily become stupidly powerful in this game as a result. This is especially satisfying because chances are your first run through this game is actually going to be fairly challenging. Some parts can even be surprisingly grueling if you aren't prepared. On that note, here's a handful of quick tips I want to share with any new players. Make a habit of keeping a pole crystal on you. There are certain locations you'll definitely want to set them down to make things much faster for later playthroughs. Trust me, your future self will thank you. It's also probably a really good idea to keep a number of secret softeners on you at all times. Petrification in this game is a bitch. And while it's not at all rampant, you don't want it to take you by surprise. Watch out for a place called Devilfire Grove, seriously. The cheeky sods at Capcom decided to send you through there for a relatively early quest, but oops, they just so happened to drop a drake in there too. If you see something in the trees that looks like it might be a dragon, 
Either sprint to the quest location or buckle up, kiddo. And if you do decide to go for a second playthrough, just before you head into the final area of the main game, take a look in the settings and put the game in offline mode. I can't say much else without getting into spoilers, but it really does make everything that much cooler. If you're a human being with a heart and a soul, I can pretty much guarantee you will enjoy this game. It just has so much going for it. So many different components that fit together to just make the whole experience as fun as possible. I've done my best to avoid certain spoilers in this video because some of the scenes and scenarios of the game are just so bafflingly awesome that it's definitely best you experience them for yourself. This game honestly deserved far more attention than it initially got, but even so it has a seriously dedicated fanbase because it really is just that good. It's one of those things you can't entirely convey with words. And who knows, maybe we'll even see a sequel someday. I think that would be a great chance for Dragon's Dogma to gain the recognition it should have been given years ago. Until then, this is Thief of Crystals, signing off for now. But seriously, please make a sequel. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video and you're a fan of fantasy, or just video games in general, you might like some of my other content. And if you'd like to support my channel, please do take a look at my Patreon, I'd really appreciate it. Catch you next time.